Egyptian. You know, my, my, my brother and I, before we became pastors, my brother also became a pastor. I became a pastor ahead of my brother. We were both seminarians, Catholic seminarians before. Both of us were studying for the priesthood. But God had different plans for us. And so we left the seminary for different reasons. And later on, God called us to the full-time ministry in another sphere of God's work. And we were reading a lot of books of success while we were young. My brother was the one who introduced me to this uh, literature on success. I started to go up books. You know, we, I built a huge library on success. Napoleon Hill, name every author of success, we had it. And when I heard Jim Rohn, Jim Rohn is one of America's most sought after, most respected business consultants and motivational gurus. When Jim Rohn made this statement many years ago and I heard it, I was so stunned, you know. When I analyzed his words, you know, he just gave us a summary in just one sentence of the entire science of success. Do you want to be successful? You don't need to spend hundreds and thousands of pesos to know the secret of success. Jim Rohn already delivered it in just one sentence. And I was so amazed how he was able to summarize everything I've studied and my brother in just one sentence. This is, is what he said. Success is not something to be pursued. This is where everybody is wrong. It is attracted by the person that you become. The goal should not be to succeed. Because if your only goal is success, you will do everything necessary to get to your goal, right? And that includes making some moral compromises here and there, stepping on some people here and there, doing, you know, unfair things here and there, because your number one goal is to succeed. And you'll do everything to make that happen, right? But you see, the compromises we commit along the way in our desire to succeed, later on backfire against us after we have reached the top. These compromises later on will haunt you from the past. People you've stepped on, you know, moral compromises you made now are being exposed. Those who don't like you, who hate you, will find every reason to bring you down. They will expose every mistake you made that will ultimately discredit you. You understand this? Real success is enduring success. If your success doesn't endure, it's just an experience of a moment. Real success is enduring success. How many of you have heard of Henry Ford? Is Henry Ford still successful today even though he was been dead decades ago? Is he still successful today? Ford Motors. I just rode a Ford uh, Everest going to Marawi with my family. I said, wow, high tech. Ford is still alive. <laughs> okay. And listen to this. The enduring success, real success, is success that outlives the person. That's why when people ask me, Pastor, or you know, some call me mentor, can you recommend to us books that are really uh, good books on success? I said if you want to really find the right books on success, don't buy books that were written by people who are still alive. Because those truths are still being tested. Look for the books written by men who have already died many years ago and yet their success lives on. You can be sure those principles work. It has been tested by time. Do you understand that? Okay? And the best book on success is no other than the Bible. This book has changed literally millions of lives around the world. Okay? Because the Bible is a character-based book. And character is important to your success. Okay? So, in other words, if success is your goal, you may get to the top. But the question is, will you be able to remain on the top? 
Ability can bring you to the top, but it takes a lot of character to keep you there. Because when you're on the top, when you feel like a god, you'll be exposed to every form of temptation that will invite you to your ruin. David, the King David, after successive successes, military successes against his enemies, at the height of his career, when he was most successful, it was at that moment that he fell into murder and adultery because of Bathsheba. At the height of his career. Okay? Why? Because success is not the goal. So what is the goal? The goal should be excellence. The better you become, the more successful you become. Success is attracted by the person that you become. Don't focus on trying to be successful. Focus on becoming as excellent as you can be in your ability, in your moral character, in your relationships with people, in your capacity to move forward despite obstacles and hindrances. If you develop excellence in ability, character, and vision, you'll be able to attain to success that endures. Why? Because success is attracted by the person that you become. Success is just a byproduct of excellence. Enduring success is just a byproduct of excellence. Understand that? Okay? That is why welcome failure. Because failure invites you to discover what you need to improve in yourself so you become a better person. And the better person you become, the more successful you will be. That's only true in your work, it's also true in your marriage. You always think that our wife is the problem. Every time your wife nags you, you're looking at a mirror. Now some of those naggings may be extreme and exaggerated. Yes, I agree. <laughs> But you need to listen because some of those things that your wife is telling you may be indeed true about you. And those are areas where you need to grow and improve to become a better husband so you'll have a happier wife. The key to making, making your wife happy and have a successful marriage is not that your wife will change. The key to a successful marriage is when you begin to change for the better. And develop yourself in the, the qualities that you need to really give assurance to your wife that you truly love her. You understand that? Many times we pray the wrong prayers. God, change him. I'm having a hard time. Lord, change that person. Lord, it's really, you know, a, uh, you know, a struggle for me. Lord, change my situation. Lord, I cannot stand this anymore. When you pray the wrong prayers, you may not succeed in life. The right prayer should be, Lord, change me so I will learn how to overcome this challenge. Lord, change me so I can be a better husband to my wife. Lord, change me so I can be a better father to my children. You understand that? The key to success in anything in life is that you become a better person and you become better and better because your focus on becoming the best and when you develop excellence in your life I tell you money will never be a problem I always teach in companies from the Exicom, Manco Exicom down to the rank and file in Manila I always teach especially those who are done they're struggling these are in the rank and file I always tell them this you know the most important asset that you can have in your life if you want to move forward in your life is that you protect the trust of people in you you might be a janitor but if you can be proven to be completely trustworthy hindi bang tatagal you'll be elevated you understand this the focus is you improve yourself Improve your character. Improve how you relate with people. Learn to develop a positive attitude towards people. Stop talking negative things about people. Look for what you can affirm in people. Because when you develop that ability, when you excel in your ability to con relate with people in a positive way, you will not remain where you are. The goal is to become a better person and keep improving yourself. And one day, you'll be surprised money will not be a problem. 
Why? Because those who have the resources are looking for people whom they can trust. Because they will not invest thousands and millions of pesos in somebody whom they know is going to make their investment a waste. But if you're the person who will develop excellence in your ability, your moral character, in your relationships with people, you develop excellence in your attitude towards things, I tell you, people will be looking for you. I'm speaking from experience. The goal is never to run for money. You don't make money your goal. If you make money your goal, you'll find yourself compromising along the way to get the money. You'll be using people. You'll be compromising to get, because money is your goal. Make excellence your goal. Because when you become an excellent person, money will run after you. I'm speaking from experience. You understand this? Okay? Excellence. Success is attracted. Can we say that together? Success is attracted by the person that I become. Be a better husband to your wife. Focus on improving yourself instead of trying to improve your wife. That's not your business. Your only business is to improve yourself. How to really love your wife. And I'll tell you, you'll have a great and happy marriage. Okay? Let's take a look at what we can learn from the greatest life changer, Jesus himself. In John 1.42, we find these words. Jesus looked at him, that Simon Peter, and said, You are Simon, son of John. You will be called Cephas. Which, when translated, is Peter. I want you to know that this one verse carries a lot of tons of dynamite. <laughs> Once you understand what's going on here. Okay? We'll take a look at this verse and see key ideas from Jesus' words. Purpose, process, and person okay purpose process and person let's take a look at purpose you see when the first time jesus saw simon he did not focus on his weaknesses and the fact that he knew this is the man who one day will deny three times he knew him jesus already knew that you know why because in the next story with nathaniel nathaniel cursed the birthplace of christ can anything would come out of Nazareth. And then when they came to Jesus, Jesus said, Behold, a true Israelite, a man of integrity. And Nathaniel said, How did you know me, uh, Rabbi? Before Philip came to you while you were still under the fig tree, I saw you. Which means he heard the entire conversation. That even though he knew now that Jesus knew that he insulted him, yet when he came to Jesus, Jesus affirmed him. Wow, that's powerful. To affirm somebody who insults you? Okay? Jesus already knew Simon Peter. He knew this other man who one day will deny him. But instead of looking at the impending failure of Simon, Jesus focused on his purpose for his life. Okay? He saw a f the finished product. He had a vision for Simon for what he can become by God's grace. He said, one day you will be called the rock. Peter in he Greek, Petros, means the rock. And so what is Jesus saying? Jesus, in effect, is saying this, Simon, you may not know that I know you. In fact, I know your name. You're surprised that I know your name. But I know more than your name. I know one day you're going to prove yourself to be a failure because you'll make a lot of promises to me that you can never keep. You'll be a person whose loyalties are quick to change depending on who is in front of you. I know you are going to be unstable as a person, especially at the time of your greatest test. But you know, Simon, I'm not looking at that. I'm looking at my purpose because one day I'm going to make you the opposite of who you are. From an unstable personality, I'm going to make a rock out of you one day. You understand that? Jesus is not focused on who you are today. When the Lord Jesus looks at you, he's focused on what you will become by his grace. And I tell you in the word of God, for those of us who read the Bible, the goal of God is to make you like Christ one day, and God is committed to make that happen. Do you understand that? You see, God has a vision for you, for what you are meant to become. Most of us don't know what God meant us to become, but God knows. And that vision is always in his mind. 
And I tell you that God is committed to bring you there if you are willing to surrender your life to Him and allow Him to work in your life. You understand that? You see, when he saw Simon, he did not look at the unfinished product. He saw the finished product and said, one day, you will be called the rock. That's the opposite of your personality today. That's what I'm going to make out of you because of my grace. Do you understand this? Never focus on what you're going through. You know, we become weaker when we focus on what we're going through. We become stronger when we focus on where we're going to. You need to recognize that God has a purpose for your life. And that purpose is that one day your life will be used by God to touch many lives. One day God will make you successful. That is his goal for you. That's why when you go through failure, don't allow failure to hinder you because God is not finished with you yet. Amen. God has a purpose for your life. As he had a purpose for Simon. Okay? He focused on his potential rather than his weaknesses. Most of us focus where we fail. Oh, I'm so weak like this. No. Focus. Remember, God has given you potentials in your life that God wants you to discover and use. Marami sa atin, madaling maingit, no? When we see others, you know, doing better things than we do. People who are gifted, talented, you know. How many of you get jealous of people like that? Don't be ashamed. You'll be surprised. Look around you. <laughs> That's almost everybody. <laughs> you know, part of the weakness of our manhood, because we long to feel our worth through our performance, you know, experiences of failure can devastate us because we base our worth on our performance as men, right? And experience of success can make us egotistical, proud, and sometimes even arrogant, right? The problem is that when you base your worth on performance, when you see others outperform you, you begin to look down on yourself. Because you're measuring your worth based on your performance, and you're not as good as the person, that's why you get jealous. Why? Because you're basing your worth on the wrong thing. It's not about your performance primarily. Because that performance can change if you're willing to learn what it takes to become a better person. Everybody has their own unique purpose in this world. Don't be jealous of those who are beginning to fulfill their life's purpose. Focus on your purpose. Focus on what God has given you. Focus on the potentials God built in your life. Focus on your strengths. Build on your strengths. And one day, you'll find your own place. It's a waste of energy getting envious of people because they're doing a better job because you can do a much better job if you focus on what you have and build on what you have instead of what you don't have. Do you understand that? That's why focus on potential. Every person has a potential to be great. And if you, Christ is in your life, you have every potential to be truly great because you were meant to become like the greatest leader of all time, Jesus Christ himself. Amen? Okay? He saw Simon's impending failure as a necessary part of his purpose for him and to achieving his full potential. Did Jesus allow Simon Peter to fail? Yes, he did. Why? Because it was part and parcel a necessary part of the process to bring him where he was meant to be if he never failed he may not have learned the lessons necessary to be where God wants him to be okay let's take a look at this Luke 22 can you this is what Jesus said to Simon Peter before he was arrested that night Simon Simon Satan has asked to see if all of you are sweet but I have prayed for you Simon that your faith may not fail and when you have turned back, strengthen your brothers. But he replied, Lord, I'm ready to go with you to prison and to death. Jesus answered, I tell you, Peter, before the rooster crows today, you will deny three times that you know me. Is Simon bound to deny Christ? Jesus already predicted it. It's going to happen. Then why did he say, I prayed for you? Prayed for what? He's still going to fail, right? Did Jesus pray that he will not fail? Did Jesus pray that Simon will not fail? No. He just said, you're going to fail. But I prayed for you that your faith, that means even when you fail, Simon, I am praying that your faith will be strong. 
Because that is not the end. If you have faith, what you're going to do, the failure you will commit will just be the beginning of my fulfilling my purpose for you. Does God allow failure? Remember, you can never hold God responsible for your choices. You can say, God, why did you allow me to fail? You made the choice, son. I just did not intervene and stop you from reaping the consequences of your wrong choice. If I allowed you to go through the consequence, why blame me? That's the consequence. Every action, every decision has a consequence. You have to learn that, son. Okay? If I allowed you to fail, it's because you made the choice. But there are times I can stop you from making the wrong choice. Okay? But... I can allow and I will allow you to fail because you need to experience that failure so that you will know who you are and what you need. You'll never sense your deep need of me if you're too strong and too confident because you will never see yourself in your true colors until you fail. You understand that? Failure helps you see yourself in a deeper way. And God needs that. So you will know where you will ask God to change you. And until you change, you cannot succeed. You understand that? That's why failure is so crucial to God's work in your life. In failure, God is inviting you to look at yourself and know that you need Him so much to change what you cannot change. That's why I tell people, a fall is a step forward if it brings you to your knees. A fall is a step forward if it brings you to your knees and humbles you. And now that you see where you need to change, you're willing to cry to God, God, change me. And God will say to you, congratulations. That's the purpose of failure. You understand that? Jesus did not pray that Simon will not fail. He prayed that in the midst of his failure, he will still have the faith to turn back to him. And Jesus said, when you have turned back, and I know you will because I'm praying for you that your faith will be strong, even when you fail me, I want you to use that experience to strengthen your brothers. You see, I have a purpose why I'm allowing you to fail, Simon. Because others will be falling and failing like you. And I want them to be encouraged by my grace. Because you will know my grace after you fail. But remember, all those consequences are the result of your choices. But my grace will keep you from complete despair. Because I can lift you up again and give you 70 times 7 chances to start over. That's why Jesus said, don't forgive 7 times, Simon. Forgive 77 times. God is not the God of the second chance. He's the God of 77, 70 times 7 chances. That's the power of God's grace. So long as you learn. Okay? Focusing on where we're going through can make us weaker. Focus on where we're going to. And that's what Jesus is saying, Simon... You're going to fail, but don't focus there. I'm going to pray that your faith will be strong so you'll see where you're going because I'm going to use you to encourage your brothers from your experience. Okay? What Jesus saw in Simon, he had leadership potential because whenever Jesus asks a question, he's always the first to answer. He's always taking leadership all the time. He saw the potential. Number two, he saw his capacity for, capacity for devotion. He was so devoted to Jesus, he was willing to cut off the ear, you know, the servant of the high priest when he was arrested in the guard. I said, Lord, I'm going to strike, you know. So devoted <laughs> to his master. When Jesus said, the son of man will be crucified in Matthew 16, he said, Lord, this can never happen. I will never allow that to happen to you. And Jesus said, get thee behind me, Satan. <laughs> An impulsive person, okay? And thirdly, his willingness to stand for a friend against all odds. Aren't these great assets of Simon Peter? Jesus saw all of this. It's just one look. And he said, that's potential. But Jesus had to work on three things in Simon. Number one, he had to work on 
his impulsiveness. How many of you tend to be impulsive in your decision and then you regret it later? Come on. Okay, thank God. Many are not alone. <laughs> impulsiveness. Okay? He's so quick to talk but quick to act on what he said. So quick to talk that he had to be rebuked. Get me behind me, Satan, Jesus said in Matthew 16. He, he said the wrong thing. Okay? Secondly, his fear of man. That night, when he was following Jesus after his arrest, oh, you're one of these disciples. I saw you. You're from Nazareth. You're a Galilean, right? No, I do not know the man. Natakot na sa tao. Fear of man. And thirdly, masyado sang mayabang sa sarili niya. It's always the one who wants to show to the disciples, I am better. Who the people, the crowd say that I am? Matthew 16, you're the Christ, the son of the living God. So I was the first to speak, you know. So that to pride himself. Lord, even if they desert you, I will never desert you. I'm willing to go to the death for you. Very confident, you know. And then he blew it. <laughs> These were the things that Jesus was going to change in his life. So he attains to his full potential as a leader among the apostles. Are you still here? Okay.